Joining us this is morning, Tatiana Jordan. Tatiana Jordan. I get the name right. Jordan. Tatiana. Tatiana. Okay. Tatiana. All right. It's Tatiana Jordan. So I'm here with Wayne Robinson, chairman and founder of Vets in STEM, correct? That's correct. Awesome. I like getting things right, <laughs> especially with somebody who has a background uh, in the military, yes. right? You're, yes. you're probably a pretty precise person. Things are pressed and like I in wish. order. And <laughs> I wish. <laughs> right? but I'll take that. <laughs> so before we get into Vets in STEM, tell us about the background, you know, your experience okay. in the in the armed services. Okay, so first thank you for having me here and sharing your platform uh, where I get to share my story uh, of, of vets similar to myself. So I grew up in, in Mobile, Alabama and joined the Army, believe it or not, uh, over 30 years ago. No and so, way! Yes. Wow! Yes. So I joined the Army, joined in uh, artillery. And so my job in artillery was to compete or compute the numbers to be able to get a projectile from here to many miles of, miles away. And so uh, we had to take into consideration rotation of the earth, uh, temperature right here, destination, and the varying wind speed and direction at uh, every so many meters and so we actually learned to do that by uh, do that manually and so eventually <laughs> right they let us work and put that data into the computer and so the computer did so I did that for 12 years and uh, once leaving uh, artillery I wanted to find a bit more of a challenge and uh, you may not be able to tell by this interview but I'm generally an introvert <laughs> until right I'm talking about subjects of which I'm passionate about right you know what I am too. <laughs> Titania, I've seen your shows. You can't be an introvert. You... I am though. I'm like blah, in front of the I camera, but when I'm at home, I'm just like, just want to chill. I just want to wow, chill with my dog. That's, I know. That's how you. That's uh, how I decompress. Yep. Yeah. And recharge and yep. energize and likewise. Yeah. Right. So. So back to you. I mean, 1987, right, was when you got started. 85. 85. Yes. Okay. And then. Right up until you said 12 years, yep. so that's 97. Oh, you're doing the math. <laughs> right? I see, I'm a thinker too. Yes. Wow, and a lot changed yes. between 85 and 97. You were, yes. wow, a part of some major things in, yes. in the course of, of American history. Um, yes. But I interrupted you because oh, I'm just okay. so excited about what you're talking about. But so I'm glad that you, that you noticed that because it, it really did change, which is actually what a lot of that is what prompted me to found vets and stem and so it'll all come back uh, full circle okay at the uh, at the end so i was looking for a challenge and really being an introvert i thought hey i could go and be a drill sergeant or a or a recruiter and so you know people told me oh you can't be a recruiter so i wanted to be a recruiter so yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> i became a recruiter went to Pen was stationed in uh, pennsylvania and loved, uh, loved it five years there. Uh, while there, I was able to coach football and basketball, which is a big passion of mine, yeah. being from Alabama. Uh, when leaving there, I was looking for my next challenge. And uh, I had heard about special operations. And so didn't know a lot about special operations. I just had a leader tell me it would be very tough. And he didn't think I could swim. And because of that, uh, I probably would make it. So, of course, you know, throughout conversation, you'll notice I like challenges. I could swim. I grew up on the beach, right? So I applied, got accepted, and became a member of Delta Force. So I was there my first tour for three years, left, uh, took another leadership position, and then returned. Uh, so I was a two-time member of Delta Force. And my last uh, assignment was back in recruiting as the command sergeant major for New York City Recruiting Battalion. Wow. And so we covered a large geographically dispersed area. I chose New York because it was tough. Uh, it was challenging. 
uh, led a great, great team. We were able to build something great there. Left there and uh, now got out of the Army, 26 years in the Army at that time. So it was 2011. Was looking for my next challenge and decided to, why not just go and do what I always wanted to do, which was work Wall Street. So I uh, applied to the University of Chicago, got accepted uh, for, my MB in, for their MBA program. Eventually made it on to Wall Street at a hedge fund. Uh, became a partner at a hedge fund. Left there and wanted to give back to those that I had served with and became the president and CEO of the largest student veteran organization in the, uh, in the country. And uh, for the next few years, I actually helped to author and write the last two GI Bills. Wow. So wow. now with all of the change that I'd seen in the military that you mentioned earlier, I saw the way we were trained when I came in, which was really don't ask why, don't ask why, right? Just take it. To after 9-11, the young people that were coming in, they were asked to do something that we weren't asked to do when I first joined, which was think as an enlisted person, which was to be able to think, make decisions, use your judgment, speak to the media, right? And wow. I was on a committee, a committee to Tanya that uh, had to make a recommendation of if we should decide if these young people could do it. So my background had been special operations, and I knew what it took for individuals to get prepared to work in a special ops environment. So I said, surely these 18, 19 year olds just coming out of high school could not do it. To my surprise, they not only did it, they did it extremely well. And so I was really excited when I got to go back and work on their behalf because I knew with the proper resources and guidance that they could do excellent things. So that's where the GI Bill came in and now vets and vets and STEM. Man, I mean, we could have a whole show about each section <laughs> of your journey and I have so many questions. <laughs> but what I would love to get to now is just talking more about vets in STEM. Mm -hmm. First of all, what's the website? So it's uh, www.vetsinstem.org. Vetsinstem.org. Yes. Okay, well, give it to us. What is it? So Vets in STEM came about uh, when I was leading a student veteran organization, and we uh, developed the largest study of student veteran graduation rates since World War II. So it hadn't been done at the time. It was 74 years. And so what we saw was that vets were graduating on par with traditional students number one, but number two, that a third of them were beginning STEM careers or STEM uh, uh, seeking uh, STEM credentials and then dropping out after a year. Hmm. And so my curiosity yeah. made, you know, uh, led me down a path of meeting with many vets and finding out, hey, uh, what happened here, what happened? And so it turned out that they were just lacking resources, uh, connections of, among the beginning things. So. When I left, I thought, wow, imagine the return on investment to America on paying the GI Bill, your taxes, right? If vets could actually begin to close the gap in the area of science, tech, engineering, and math in the, in the country. And so that is what we began to do. We, uh, it was founded at the University of Chicago with um, uh, myself and a couple of classmates. We're now based in Silicon Valley. So what we're bringing is technology to the transition space so that when they transition, they're actually informed. That's amazing. That's what and we're doing. so just empowering. <laughs> Thank it's you. And you know, I, I just, I wish I knew um, how, how much there was to do in the world of technology when I was a little girl yes. and in middle school and in yes. high school and in college. Yes. I mean, you know, I took one computer science class in high school just for fun and to get a behind the scenes of programming yes. and knowing what those implications were yep. um, 
I could have changed, you know, my life. Yes. And it's so important. Everybody needs to know what tech can do for them, how it can change their lives. But not everybody has the right opportunity, resources, yeah. connections. Yes. It's all it takes. I saw in one segment or one article of yours that where it says that in tech you get to build your own world, and yeah. that's what motivates you to work with uh, girls in yes. in tech. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I get to tell these curious, intelligent young veterans that are transitioning and service members that are transitioning or are thinking about transition that you get to because they're problem solvers yes. right so we're asking them to be problem solvers mm -hmm. so now mm -hmm. we're saying be, uh, now that you you are a problem solver you get to actually build your world what should your world look like and so I'm not that much of a techie guy. I understand the 50,000 foot level. I'm the visionary. Right. I like to be able to create the pathways and create the teams that can, can make this happen and bring in the resources. So I'm comfortable doing those things. So that's the message that we give uh, as we travel. Wow, wow. My grandfather, he's still living. He will be 96 wow. uh, this May 28th. Wow. Yeah, he uh, was on the beaches of Normandy. He was in World War II. Um, his stories are just fascinating. You know, living in a foxhole and yes. standing beside a, a comrade when a shell took off the top of his head. Yes. I mean, it's it's real. Yes, it is a lot more real than some 19-year-olds are experiencing exactly. today. Um, so, just thank you, everybody out there who uh, has given your time and service to this country and to the family members of those because it's, yes. it's a lot you know my grandma was all alone back here in the states <laughs> yes. with a brand new baby and the husband across the ocean you yes. know so it's it's a lot um how can we as a community uh pour into vets in stem what can we do how can we help so one uh one is starting here to be able to get the the word out mm -hmm. uh we've done i've done a couple of articles on on linkedin that talk about being able to close the gap. So what, what I would ask first and foremost is to look at veterans as capable. Amen. Right? Look at <laughs> us veterans yes. as capable, right? Because we're the ones that, you know, you'd leaned on heavily when it was time to defend the nation, right? And and to keep uh, stability, right, throughout the throughout the world. So now when we get back, we're not, you know, the, the story is either hero or a broken veteran, hero or homeless, right? Mm -hmm. So you know that plays well early, but who we actually are is we're the average individual that's around uh, in your community that was empowered, that made decisions early to be able. You know, we we opted in, we selected in, right? Which makes us a little different. We're willing to volunteer. Right, so first, help to change the narrative. Yes. And then second, be able to invest resource, invest resources into the individuals, right? So when you look at, uh, I've done studies on uh, diversity and uh, I look at the parallel between veterans of all background, races, creeds, colors, religions, and those that of uh, diverse ethnicities that came to the country earlier or that may live here now, and there are parallels. There are attributes that are very similar. Both may be first generation college students or uh, pursuing credentials. Second, that uh, uh, a lack of access or connection. So when I transitioned, what I didn't have, what I had a lot of to tell you was I had a lot of military veteran military friends. What I didn't have were civilian friends that could teach me how to be a civilian. So like you, you mentioned earlier, the rigidity, right, on time, yes, that was me. I lived 26 years of, of that. Fortunately, I met uh, uh, individuals, my classmates and eventually colleagues in my MBA program that provided a soft landing for me. So they could take me out and, and mentor me and, and show me the ropes and teach me how to talk to, to companies. You know, my first interview for a company, I, I was sitting like I was at a military board, right? Because that was my way of showing respect, right. but it made the company uncomfortable, right? <laughs> right? 
so these are so it's the the soft skills that we have to have have to learn we can bring value and then the second of course resources mm -hmm. right are always uh, uh, at I mean a must for a nonprofit yes so being able to donate mm -hmm. right so a uh, hundred percent of what we bring in goes to support veterans so wow. for everyone that we uh, have none of that goes to a salary so we have a small team so we push uh, everything into the technology to be able to support them so that's wow. the that's the plan. That's what I've been working on. Oh my gosh, that's amazing! <laughs> I'm so happy and thankful to know about mm -hmm. this now. Vetsinstem.org. Yes. Wayne Robinson. Yes. Silicon Valley. Yes. Right. Um, but, but I live here now. You live here in yes, Atlanta and now. We're based in Silicon. And Silicon Valley. Um, you know, obviously a global footprint. Yes. Um, gosh, you know, besides raising awareness, uh, making sure that you know that vets are able and yes. capable yes. Um, and, and certain resources. Are, are there any specific resources that are just kind of weighing on your on your mind and heart even this quarter? And like what like what do you need? Like tell us. Yes, so what we could always use mm -hmm. are individuals willing to connect veterans to math resources. Okay. Math so when resources. we found those uh, the attributes that were missing the number one was was math math right okay. so uh, when I got out I used Khan Academy okay right so yeah. that is something that we want to be able to build uh, we're in the the process of being able to connect so uh, what we'd love to be able to do is for math teachers individuals that have uh, um, again math resources mm -hmm. that they're willing to share mm -hmm. with uh, with military veterans so that's that's huge because yeah. that actually keeps them out of these high demand career fields yeah. so capable but it's been a couple of years mm -hmm. right it's been <laughs> a couple of, yeah so the math they were doing was probably lazing right they, the laser was telling them distance and direction right but uh, to get in, they obviously had to take a test, and, and uh, the ones that we target score well. So math resources, and again, just uh, being able to provide funds to mm -hmm. be able mm -hmm. to help us to get to the military bases and uh, speak to them before and connect with them before they transition. Because after transition, it's, it's tough. 65% yeah. are married. So they're thinking, I just need a job. Now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that's a, yeah, I get it. Um, you know, maybe any companies out there who are watching, if you uh, have corporate grants or foundations yes. that, you know, feel strongly about supporting diversity and technology, not only diversity yes. from a race or gender perspective, yes. but of a just talent pool, yes. right? Yes. I think Thought and uh, experience. Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm just saying, if I worked at Google or Microsoft <laughs> and I was in charge of the budget, I might be writing a check yes. to vetsinstem.org. I'm just saying. Yes. That, I mean, I appreciate right? that. Right? Yes. So you know, yes. if you know somebody, if you know that person, you should just tag them in the video below or yes. tweet, like whatever. Just you know, let's spread the love. Um, Wayne, thank you so much for what you're doing. This is extremely. Uh, moving and impactful. Thank, Thank you. you for your service. Thank you for your vulnerability and sharing your story. And um, we, uh, you know, at 3CI obviously can't wait to to partner and support with you in any way we can. Um, everybody watching, please, please check out vetsinstem.org. Wayne Robinson, awesome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks.